I'm thrilled to see this man, not only because I thoroughly enjoy his work and certainly when he stops by uh, on this show, but because his new Netflix comedy special, Paper Tiger, when it was released on Tuesday, got him trending on Twitter. I was genuinely concerned for his well-being, so it's good to see you, Bill Burr. <laughs> you were going to get canceled. Well, no. Well, canceled from life. You know, you see yeah. people trend on Twitter, and it's all of a sudden like, Certainly when they're of a certain age, you're like, oh, no. So that's why I, yeah. want, I want Twitter. Yeah, when... it's usually something that, that they die. Right. That something bad happened. Right. Oh, speaking of that, Kevin Hart's out of the hospital, which makes me feel really good. Uh, oh, good. Is that that happened today? Did that uh, happen I think today? yesterday. I saw that trending. Whether it's true or not, I, I don't know. I oh, think yeah. He, I think he's back, which is great. Okay, but you're back. Yeah. You're here. Good yeah. to see you. Yes, I am. You're feeling good? Everybody good? You're good? Yeah. No mononucleosis? No nothing? I know. How the hell did poor Jet fans? All you can say is Jet fans, having suffered for a long time as a sports fan, it just yes. makes it all the better when you finally win it. And uh, when you're talking about the Browns being cursed. Yes. They have won four NFL titles. And for some reason, the NFL acts like prior to the merger, nothing happened. Right. Which, so what, Jim Brown isn't a champion? I agree. Like with he's you. not on the, he can't talk to a Super Bowl champion eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> it makes no sense to me. And every other, like That's you go to NHL, they count titles all the way back to when like the Stanley Cup was like this big. It was like a beer mug. And they played on like a pond. <laughs> You know, the Canadians beat the Montreal Maroons. Yeah, know, that's right? the way it was. Let's all take a trip on the Titanic. But they, they, <laughs> they count all of those. And then for some reason, like, it's the, not like the NHL didn't merge a couple of times. I think they, they took, uh, what was it, the, the WHL took a couple teams there. Or the IHL, they yeah, took right. a couple teams from there. There's but the they, original six, and then, then and now there's, you know. It should it be called going. the surviving six. Because there was more than six, and the Depression wiped out all those Montreal Maroon teams and all those. So those I were the like six it. teams that survived. And then they continued on and on and on and on uh, doing what they were doing. And then what was weird, this is, oh, that's what I love about the NHL, is they always do everything so weird. So then in 67, the expansion, they added six teams. So if you already have six established teams and you add six, yes. when you put three and three, three right. in the East Coast, three in the West Coast, they didn't. They kept one conference of all original six and then they had one conference of all the, the new people. So when that's why when the Bruins like went to the finals, they had already played the Stanley. They already played for the championship because they were playing the Blues, which were an expansion team. Yeah. And we beat them, I think, yeah, four games in well, a row. Well, before the NFL did some realignment, too, Atlanta was in the NFC West. Yeah, there was, there was no, no There was no geographic sensibility whatsoever. Yeah. Like the Red Wings always got screwed with that, where yeah. they were always considered like an East uh, West. Coast team. Yeah. Right, yeah. They're, they're Detroit Red Wings were always West. Yeah. You know, and just that was when Michigan, you know, the fight song says Champions of the West. That was, you know, Michigan was around before the Louisiana Purchase. That's what I'm oh, saying. Oh, is that why it's yeah. that? Yeah, man. Good Lord. That's How scared were you during that Army? So I was, at my, <laughs> I, I was at my son's soccer game. Okay, and my phone was running out of batteries based on how many times I was getting all of these updates. That was supposed to be a cupcake game, too. You think? I mean, it was downright frightening. <laughs> but Army's one of those teams, too, that you just got to, you know, have you. O Oklahoma almost lost to him last year. Right. Where were you? Now, what's your I connection to Michigan Vegas. again? What's your connection to uh, Family. I have a couple. Uh, okay. I have some family uh, on both sides okay. that, that have lived out there or still live out there. And uh, so, yeah, I was I was brought up to like Michigan and right. hate Ohio State. But it was great because when I did it, that was when Woody Hayes, when I first started watching, Woody Hayes was still at Ohio State. And Bo. And, uh, yeah, Bo uh, Schembechler. Was, yeah, right, uh, the 10-year the war, the Woody and yeah. Bo 10-year war that was yeah, going on Yeah, so I got there. to watch that right up until when Woody Hayes, he didn't even punch him that hard, but when he, <laughs> he punched that, that guy for intercepting the ball, I just saw it like, geez, the passion that this guy has. I also remember, too, seeing a documentary on the, the Michigan-Ohio State uh, rivalry. Yes. After, you know, they were talking about how the Red Sox and Yankees was like the biggest thing, you know, like 10 years ago before we ended the curse or whatever, 15 years ago. And uh, once I watched that documentary, I was like, oh, this is nothing compared to what these people went through. Of course. As far as like the level of just hatred. and. So where were you for the Michigan Army game? I was in... Um, Vegas. I was doing a show out there, and I'd hung around an extra day to go see Elton John because he's on the Farewell Tour, which is an amazing show. Is it really? A three-hour show, no opener, opens with a hit, plays nothing but hits for three hours. It's no, unbelievable. I and it goes it. by like that. No kidding. Yeah, you got to see him, too. And, and what that guy has like put himself through as a performer, one point he got up and walked 
across from the piano. He looked yeah. like a, an, a retired NFL running back. <laughs> and, and they're showing in the videos the stuff he used to do. He'd be like doing handstands in those high heel boots he wore and stuff. Just crushing his hips and his knees. So that's, I was, uh, that's why he's walking around like yeah, that. Yeah, as a fellow performer, I was watching like this guy for 50 years has understood that people paid to get a sitter, right. took a night <laughs> off, you know, or spending their hard-earned money and gave you a show. So, and he was like, uh, yeah, he was like a great pitcher. Right. Who now, you know, maybe didn't still have like the fastball, but he knew how to still... Crafty. Pitch he's crafty. Oh, he was he's great. crafty. He was great. He's crafty. I hope that came off right. You blew me away. He was no, no, awesome. I'd say that's good. But yeah. you were in Vegas, so that's where you were for the. Yeah, sorry. Did, so did you watch the game in a sports book or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I so? came down there and I saw these happy Buckeye fans. I was like, oh no, what's Come happening? On. What Are is you serious happening? that like these happy Buckeye fans watching Michigan yeah. versus You know what's Army? funny is they've, you know, I hate to say it, but they totally dominated Michigan this entire century. And the joy they still get, it's unreal. Like right. at some point, you got to kind of be like, you know, I mean, even I, I don't hate the Yankees as much as I used to because it's 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 kind of over. Like, like the, what's over? Well, as far as the, you know, Curse of the Babe, 1918, yes. what are they, they going to yeah. ch- chant last year's number at me? <laughs> I mean, I know we're never going to catch. <laughs> They're we're not never going to catch 27 championships. <laughs> right. And at least not in my lifetime, even if they just stopped winning forever. <laughs> Speaking this, of which, we were talking about this, which yes. one of my favorite stats that doesn't seem to get talked about is is if the Yankees win it this year, which yeah. they got, you know, I, I kind of think in the Astros might get them. I, but, I hear you, Bill Burr. You're but not this, wrong. But this is big. Who gets home game? That, that could change it. But right. if they win it this year, then in the last 10 decades, you know, they uh, a century worth of decades, basically. Yeah. They uh, they only won one decade. They didn't win a championship was the 80s. They won at least one World Series in nine out of 10 decades. And you just think that they went through everything, all the change, an all-white league, segregated league, mm-hmm. inter- integration, lowering the mound, free agency, strikes, other leagues, football taking over, basketball, and just continued success. Right? Yeah, you cannot, you can't mess with that. Well, if I'm not mistaken, if they don't make it, it'll be the first decade in which they don't make it. Period. To the World just Series. Just to a World Series. Right. At least in the '80s, they made it. They made it in '81. In the strike shortened year where they came out here and yeah. lost to the Los Angeles. That's what it's Dodgers. like to be a Yankee fan. Like, that's a drought. I mean, that's, that's, You're 31. That like, oh, they haven't won it since I was 21. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. It really is uh, amazing. And especially the way they've done it this time, where they really they didn't do the old school Steinbrenner way, where they just were no, well, buying they, everything. It's, it's all pretty much their own guys. The thing is, is that they did do it with the old Steinbrenner way by trying to get. Uh, you know, that Stanton for 300 million bucks where Red yeah. Sox fans were so up in arms that they thought, you know, Derek Jeter gifted Stanton to the Yankees in a trade yeah. and Stanton ha- has hardly done anything this year. Well, my favorite thing about George Steinbrenner was nothing he liked better than a 37 year old future Hall of Famer <laughs> with two years left to sign him for five years. That was one of my favorite moments on Seinfeld is when George's dad uh-huh. Met the Steinbrenner character played by Larry David because George was was George dead? Is that what happened? And 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 Steinbrenner went yeah, to yeah. They no, thought he was that George was dead. Well, they, was thought, they thought no, I'm saying no, 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 George. They thought they he thought was George dead. George Costanza was dead. Oh, okay. And okay. so the George Steinbrenner went to the Costanza's house to console him and tell him the information. And the only thing Frank Costanza that, calls Jerry. He, he says to he says to George Steinbrenner, he goes, "What the hell did you trade Jay Buna for?" And I fell <laughs> off the couch. When the line that came back was Ken Phelps, my baseball people said Ken Phelps because that is the <laughs> Ken Phelps was the 37 year old great guy that yeah. supposedly was going to be the next great Yankee. Yeah. But now they've totally reversed course on that sort of thing. But anyway, which go- I think they should have always, uh, you know, it's easy to say now, but if you look at their farm, their farm team, I mean, just the, the star, I mean, their Mount Rushmore is pretty much from their system. Yeah. There isn't really a lot of guys, other than like maybe like a Reggie or something like that. But, uh, and, you know, when we sold him Babe Ruth, because we had that Broadway show we had to do. <laughs> um, but Garrick, Mantle, DiMaggio. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right through to G- Jeter, Mariano Rivera, all these great, great players that they've had right. have all come from, uh, from their system. So Bill Burr here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk about your special, Paper Tiger, filmed at Royal Albert Hall. How did that come yeah. about in London? I uh, played drums as a hobby. 
So and my favorite Led Zeppelin, um, and big John Bonham fan, and my favorite Led Zeppelin concert footage is at Royal Albert Hall. And I just love the way it looked. I, the, the film that they shot it on and the shadows and everything. I just, you know, my whole stand-up career, I've been trying to work my way towards shooting something like that. And, uh, and I don't know. I just, I went over there one time and I was doing a, obviously a much smaller place. I took a tour of it. And I was like, this is amazing. Maybe I could come here sometime and go see like a, symphony right or whatever and i just kept going to england i kept selling more and more tickets and then last year we tried to do a show there and it sold out and i went on stage i did a show and went good but i could never get out of my head that i was there yeah i just kept thinking i'm standing where robert plant stood and john bonham's drums were right there well the beatles too right yeah i mean let's i mean that's yeah. some serious history in that place yeah but i've never really seen the footage of that it's right. just that i watched that royal albert hall thing a million times so i it's just the maple kit and John Bonham right behind. So I was kind of in my head, and, and we just went out. We had a good time, and my manager and the agent, this kind of be a great place because, you know, I'm trying to think. I've done one in the north. I've done one in the south, east coast, sure. west coast. Each one I try to make look a little bit different. I had one black and white, and it just we were like, all right, let's do it. And um, I was talking to Mike Binder, who shot it, and that's why it looks so great. And um, we're both cigar smokers, and it kind of all came about that he wanted to smoke a cigar with me in London. <laughs> that's like, how this all came about that was the final nail in the coffin that we were going to do it so i was really excited about it and then leading up to it i was getting nervous i was just like what the hell am i doing like london the different country what if the jokes don't work their critics are brutal mm -hmm. every time i go there they just they trash me every single time <laughs> and i went, really oh yeah no critics are the mess what they do For you sure. could have the most perfect Stand up set, wire to wire, nothing. Then they would still be like the sickly, bald looking, blah, 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 <laughs> stepped on stage and proceeded to have the greatest performance. Like they're still going to find something. So, um, yeah, that's how the whole thing came about. That's amazing. So, yeah. do you, do you and I hope people notice when they watch it, yeah. the time that was taken that Mike did, the job and all of his crew that they did. Like he just knocked it out of the park. It was this special, um, as far as visually, what I had in my head. Ever since I've wanted to do them and, and the pacing of the edits and all that, I think, because I've seen so many of comics that I'm fans of yes. where sometimes the way that their specials are shot, you know, it, it didn't showcase how good they were. It actually, in, in a lot of ways, knocked it down because they, they just edit, 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 edit so fast. Right. You know, I'm watching them, then I'm up in the balcony and then I'm behind, I'm swooping in. They shoot them like the born identity, which I don't understand because <laughs> like stand up is like a small intimate thing sure. so like uh i don't know well so, it's it's going gangbusters already um did you, you you sat down you told me something and i you know sometimes i got a you know my my ear um piece in my ear so i don't pick everything up uh -huh. because of uh you know i've got uh, getting ready for the segment did you say you're in a star wars the mandalorian uh the one that uh john favreau put together okay what yeah. are you doing in that I don't know if I'm allowed to say I'm allowed. I was in the trailer. You see the back of my bald head for half a second. <laughs> well, I don't want to get you in any trouble, but that's, am that's yeah, amazing. Um, and this is the thing. I've never been a sci-fi. I like like Blade Runner. Uh, there was a movie that uh, Sam Rockwell did called Moon. Okay. Like I like that sort of dark, creepy Stanley Kubrick uh, Space Odyssey. I like that. I was I was never into the. Uh, uh, the, the Star Wars thing, I just, by the time I saw it, I was just too old. Sure. They had like Ewoks and stuff, and I wanted to see Fast Times at Ridgemont <laughs> High, you know? So I, I missed the boat, so I never got on it. So, and I've religiously made fun of every one of them that came out, just teasing, just because people were excited. That's, now look at you. I'm a jerk, you know? So I see people get excited about something, and I just make fun of it. And um, so I ran into John somewhere, uh, I think hanging with Mike Binder. Right. Should start giving that guy a commission. Um, he was like, hey, I'm doing this Star Wars thing. Would you want to do something? I was like, I kind of always make fun of it. And he goes, and he was just going like, I think that'd be funny. I think your fans would get a kick out of the fact if you went into that thing. And, and then I went in there and they were shooting it like a spaghetti Western. And I was like, immediately was like so psyched to be a part of it. That's amazing. You got to see the trailer. Yeah, I, I think it's it, the Star Wars. I think, uh, I think it's going to take it to... What am I talking? I don't know anything about Star Wars, but I just the one that I saw. Once I saw the stormtroopers' heads on those sticks, I was like, "All right, oh, yeah. I'm in." There you are. I know I, that's already been out. I mean, that's, that, the trailer's that, been the out. Trailer yeah, the trailer, trailer's crazy. out. I think it comes out uh, yeah. in November. Yeah, the trailer went crazy. Yeah. Um, are you in the new uh, Breaking Bad movie? Did you get that? 
Uh, are you allowed to? Oh, you no. just paused. Okay, you're no. not in that. No, okay, because it's another Netflix thing. Are no. you are you showing up on Better Call Saul at any point in time? Uh, no. This is the are deal. these honest answers, or you can't? You no, can't these answer? are honest answers. I was I was supposed to mm-hmm. be on it, uh-huh. and unfortunately, I had somebody who was dying, and okay. I knew if I did it, I was gonna I I was gonna miss. So it. personally, you couldn't. Yeah, make I had it work. To, I had to visit him. I had to say goodbye. It sucked. Right. It, it, the whole thing sucked because. Um, Vince Gilligan's the reason why I have an acting career. Um, because other, he puts you in Breaking Bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and people always say, oh, my God, you were so great in Breaking Bad. I always want to say, you would have been great in Breaking Bad. That's how good they were. All you have to do, <laughs> Come on now. All you have to do is say what they wrote and stop on the piece of tape. Right. And they're going to shoot it, and they're going to make you look They're going to make you look good. Yeah. Well, people okay. still think I know how to act because of Vince Gilligan. Well, <laughs> you, you nailed it, Bill. There's no doubt about that. Uh, before you go, do you have any uh, advice on being a new dad for Brockman over there? You got one, you got a daughter. You talk about your, your uh, fatherhood. We just saw a clip in, in the special. Uh, no, you know what I can do is just tell you that it's awesome. It's one of the few things that lives up to the hype. And do not listen to 90% of other parents <laughs> because for some reason they, they predict just like misery. They still do it. Like my daughter's like two and a half. Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, yeah, what's that like? And the second you tell them you're enjoying it, they're like, oh, wait till she's two and a half in one week. Oh, then it's all going to be, you know, they just, and I always just say to them, like, you don't sound like you enjoy being a dad just so I can watch them backtrack. Oh, no, no, I like it. I like it. <laughs> it it's, the first few months stinks with the, uh, the sleep thing, but like, um, I think Kevin Nealon said one time, he yeah. said, I don't care if you have to take out a second mortgage, get a night nurse. This- just, you just got to do it, dude. Just, this whole idea now of like that you're just going to do it yourself is a modern thing. Like back in the day, you just you didn't get a job where you moved 3,000 miles away from your log cabin. It's just like you got married and you lived next door and then you, people helped you out. You didn't have to walk around like a zombie. So if you can afford it, somebody's going to trash me for being like an elitist. No, as you said, take out a second mortgage. Yeah. But you're kind of also a useless appendage. As, as, a, as, the, as a dad, when the baby does not require you at all. No, but over you the all, first but few no, weeks, you're, you're, the, you know what you are. You're life. that you're that utility player, where they can just <laughs> stick you anywhere. You spike Owen, right? Spike That's what Owen. you are. You you just handle food needs to be done. Got it. She needs a diaper change. Just get. That's what I. I just anytime my wife elbowed me, I just sat up like a zombie. Went in there. I talked to her in a soothing voice, you know, to try to get her to stop crying. Change the diaper. Handed her to my wife. She started nursing her. Went back to sleep. 90 minutes later, woke back up again. Yeah, I did that for like a week. And then before the night nurse came in, like the cavalry. You're the Brock Holt of the situation as yeah, well, right? Absolutely. Oh, Spike and I wore, I wore the, uh, the, the Kevin McHale's yeah, 84s you, for any Laker fans watching. My favorite. That you, was, yeah, I was about to say, you got some, uh, some uh, Celtics yeah, high tops on there right there. Yeah, I waited, uh, I waited to bust these out. Just uh, Sal Volcano from uh, Impractical Jokers hooked me up with these, so thank you. Fantastic. I, I think they're coming here, aren't they, the Impractical Jokers? Uh, yes, they're coming back. Yeah, that's, yeah they're yeah. from my hometown, Staten Island. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. I just shot a movie out there. There you go. In Staten Island? I loved it. No kidding. Yeah, it reminded me of where I grew up. That, I liked all the trees. It was, it was quieter over there. That's where I grew up. That's Did a show was. at the uh, was it St. George? St. George, yeah, yeah that's, that, that's right. It's right there where the where the ferry comes, where most people yeah. just stop and say they've been to Staten Island, get on the ferry, and go back home. Yeah, I'd uh, never been. Well, I'd... Grandpa's had uh, uh, Al Lewis used to have a comedy club there. That's what I used to go to. Grandpa's comedy. Was club. there a loony bin or something? It's, out there? Uh, something. Something like that. just shut down. I think out there. Good to see you, Bill Burr. All right, everything is uh, trending up for you, sir. But you knew that already. Yes, it is. You're one of my favorites. Thanks for coming back. Thank anytime, you for will you please? Me. Any, anytime. Uh, at Bill Burr on Twitter, at Wilfred Burr on yep. Instagram, huh? Uh, and you. Could I didn't know. I didn't know Instagram was going to be a thing. I just thought it was going to die out like Friendster. I would have picked a more name people could find me a little <laughs> easier. Easier. Oh uh, well, it's uh, it's all working, man. MGM National Harbor on October fifth in DC, the uh, Asheville, North Carolina, the U.S. Cellular Center. You'll be there for a couple. That's right, because I'm going to I'm going to that Clemson game. Oh, I, go are, one, huh? I go to one big college football game a year. We're going to Clemson, and uh, I was excited about Clemson, Florida State, to so that wide receiver lined up the you know, the wrong way. Yeah, oh, I'm God, just hoping that's that. first week jitters. By the way. <laughs> I believe in you, Florida State. I believe in you. I, I want to see that. a game. Uh, and then you'll be in Vegas in December at the Cosmopolitan Casino, Hotel and Casino. Good to see you, yep. Bill Burr. Thank you, Rich. You got it. That's Bill Burr. Check out his Netflix special. It's fantastic. Paper Tiger right now. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.